Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Techno Wizard. <laughs> I got three videos to catch up on. Oh my gosh. Um, no good reason. Over the week, I just got, you know, kind of distracted, I guess, with a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I'm going to try my best to catch up on everything today. So uh, just going to jump right into it. This is, you know, my research plan I've been working on for my business idea or my organization idea. Um, so what I, I did a little bit of it when I ended up doing is just being super specific, right, with the type of people that I want to start with, with the niche, right, that I want to start with. And I figured, like I said before, it's going to be college age, second or third generation immigrants. I think the last time I said degree, oh my gosh, I can't believe. So sorry for that. What I meant is second or third generation, meaning people who's, um, who were born here or who came over here at a very early age. So they basically identify mostly as American and they are native English speakers. Um, and the reason why I'm starting here is because, you know, again, they said start with the niche uh, or niche, however you want to say it. And uh, that's furthermore starting with my background because the whole reason why I'm doing this whole project is because, you know, I've discovered that um, it's very difficult to get access to the, to the right information. If you have no idea you know how to go about that right throughout my entire life i've suffered you know with depression poverty um i've been ambitious been driven but had no idea how to you know to to make good on that right how to uh use the resources that i have before me via the internet or whatever um to the best extent possible and so what i want to do is help people you know, to figure out how to best use these resources. Because they say, oh, yeah, you can do anything with Google. You can do anything with the Internet, right? But how, right? And if you're not exposed to that at a young age, if you're not exposed to that through your support group, through your family, it's extremely difficult to figure out how to actually do that. Um, these behaviors have to be taught. And so that's what I want to do. I want to help teach people these behaviors and expose them to these opportunities. Um, furthermore, I'm starting with second generation um immigrants because these people tend to be like I have here native English speakers so they don't have a huge language barrier that's a huge problem for you know first generation immigrants um, or some even some second generation immigrants who came here at a later um, day in their lives where the language barrier is a huge you know part of the difficulties with being integrated into America and many other countries um, and that's not something I have the facilities to deal with right now I definitely want to help towards that eventually, but I'm not there yet. I want to start with these people because I think they're more open to change, um, or at the very least, they're more self-driven, more entrepreneurial. There's actually data that shows that um, a lot of immigrants, second generation, third generation immigrants tend to be more driven um, to accomplish certain things because their parents, you know, came here for that reason, right? Very often, these people are coming from, you know, places that are that were difficult or just saw the American dream, right? It's it's a fact, uh, which is really interesting that the American dream is more um, appealing or more apparent to people who are not born in America. I've discovered that myself with my grandparents, who will always be like, go to school, you know, uh, be a doctor, engineer, you know, lawyer type of thing. Like you see that all the time with uh second third generation immigrants and they push you they push you they push you to be excellent but that can also be a problem because very often they're coming from a 20th century idea of what facilitates success such as go to college right but we all have the we, there's a lot of data showing a lot of people that go to college don't get that success right they go to college and then they have lifetime of debt and they don't have the job that they thought they was going to get. They don't have the job security. They don't have the home ownership. All the stuff that their parents and their or their grandparents, you know, expected them to have. Now, luckily for myself, though I was driven, my, my mother was not as pushy as my grandparents were, right? So because she was raised directly under them, she knows how that feels. And she she'll, she was like, yes, you know, be, be excellent, you know, do your best. But she didn't push me to try to go to college, um, especially when she realized that there was nothing I could like they couldn't pay for me to go to college. Right. I had to figure out, figure that stuff out for myself. Um, so she allowed me to kind of have a little bit of, you know, leeway to find my own path. And unfortunately, a lot of, you know, second generation and third generation, you know, people don't necessarily have that. Some do, but some don't. And so what I want to do here is help those people. 
Um, because either way that you fall along, whether your your parents are pushing you just as much as their grandparents push, um, um, or their parents push push them, or if you're like me, and your your parents expected you know from you, expected a lot from you, but they didn't necessarily push you like crazy towards those traditional paths. Either way, you tend to be driven, right? You tend to be entrepreneurial. You tend to be open to to finding resources and making good on those resources and things like that. Granted, of course, this is not this is not um, exclusive. Obviously, there's a whole lot of people who are, you know, born Americans who who are not, you know, any sort of second gen- or third generation immigrants who are self-driven. This is not exclusive, right? It's not mutually exclusive. It's just that I want to focus here first, right? Because going into my third point, um, a large reason as to why, you know, you tend to be driven at this at this culture is, is oftentimes it's born out of fear. It's because, you know, your grandparents or your parents are like, oh, if you don't do good, you're going to go back to Haiti. That's where, you know, my folks are kind of, or you're going to go back to, you know, wherever your folks came from. So they, they, they often use it as a, as a threat. At the same time, they also are proud of where they came from. So, you know, oh, we don't do it. This is not how we do it in Haiti. You know, Haiti, you know, it was this, that, and the other. We had blah, this culture, this blah. You, you know, and they, they try to push you to learn the language and all this other stuff. So it's it's kind of frustrating because you're you're kind of using they use that ancestry that that where you came from where they came from as a as a kind of scare tactic at the same time as expecting you to be prideful for where you came from you know so it's you kind of have the be- the, the best of both and the worst of both at the same time and um, I've seen that often with a lot of people not just from Haiti but from you know Trinidad from Jamaica from um, a lot of places in, uh, throughout the Caribbean um, places you know people coming from africa and uh people coming from india from um latin america all these other places right you see that all the time so i want to speak to that so i want to prioritize people specifically coming from africa and the caribbeans because that's again what i'm used to i I understand more about how to deal with that than somebody coming from latin america or somebody coming from india or something like that i know it's similar but i can't i don't i don't know anything about i don't know as much about their culture but from people coming from the Caribbean and Africa, I can point to, okay, you, you may have been taught that, you know, your culture, um, like coming from Haiti, for instance, that learning Creole is kind of like a country thing. Um, it's better to learn French or you're, you're taught that, you know, voodoo is evil, demonic and stuff like that. But I, I have learned that when you're taught like that, you kind of tend to hate yourself in a way. You, there's some sense of self-hate. Where you begin to have your your self worth and identity skewed, right? And so that's why a lot of you know immigrants coming from these places have a lot of pride in being American, right? <laughs> and uh, that that comes up with its own problems because you have this cultural erasure issue where people coming from Haiti or Africa um, they don't realize that we actually have a lot of incredible, powerful history there, right? Like, yes, there's very there's a reason why grandparents came here is because in the current day, like in the 20th century, it's been really bad. But, you know, 300, 400, you know, years ago, it was incredible. And but there's nothing there. Right. Like they don't teach you about that, most likely because your parents or your grandparents didn't know about that or because they didn't think or to, to teach you. Right. They, they, they thought you would just pick it up or whatever. Right. And and so you kind of lose that that cultural um pride and you lose that ability to to kind of you know feel feel good about where you came from or about your ancestry into and, and and that's this inherent um confidence problem so i want to i want to do my best to kind of help people see that right see the 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 power and the the richness in that history and that plays a long way into you know the ultimate uh cause for all of this based on uh the hierarchy of needs Um, which is more integrated, where you have that sense of self-esteem, right? That's grounded, that's founded in something. You have that sense of self-worth that's founded in something deeper than just being an American or being, you know, a successful uh, professional or, you know, making your parents proud or making your grandparents proud, right? It's it's more than that. So I want to teach people that, hey, you know, if you're from Haiti, there's some really great things about the culture in which you can learn from and which you can be you know, find some pride in which you can find some, you know, some amazing um, wisdom in. Uh, same thing for people coming from Africa, right? I've studied a lot of African um, cultures 
and, and history um, at this point. And so I would like to show people that, you know, so that people can take pride in where they came from at the same time as use that to stand out here in America, right? Uh, to start businesses or start organizations and help other people out that, that are similar to them and so on and so forth and just start the cycle and, and, and just push it along. So that's all of that is why I want to make it super specific to this specific, you know, group of folks. And of course, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of this will apply to Latin Americans, to Indians, to, you know, um, Asians, to, you know, you know, even people coming from European places that they don't usually talk about. So um, I think that this will be a good starting point. But uh, it has to, I have to find some starting point. And it's taken me a while to get here, but I'm glad I'm finally getting somewhere with this. So, um, yeah, that's where I am right now. And um, it took a while to explain all that, but I think it was it was necessary. Um, excuse me. So what I want to do next is then get a better handle on these questions, some other questions to ask. I want to get um, some questions for the methodology. So these different things, uh, ways in which I'll ask. Actually, I'm going to have to start with the pre-screen survey. So I need a, I need a section for that. So this pre-screen is... Um, the survey I'll send out to find people, right? To, to figure out who's going to be an initial um, round of, of, of uh, interviews and things like that. And in this survey, I'm going to have to figure out their background. I'm going to have to figure out, well, even for background, it has to be more specific. I need to figure out their um, socioeconomic status because I do want to start with people who are struggling first because they probably have less resources available to them, right? Um, and it might be hard to figure out. Like maybe this is, maybe I'll discover when I put that survey out. Nobody wants to answer this question, when, which is fine. But I think I need to put it on here just because that's you know um, how I want to be specific about it. I want to figure out their ancestral or cultural background. So again, oops. So again, there are they from you know somewhere in the Caribbean or Africa or something like that. You know, where are they from? What's their background with second generation, third generation, things like that. Um, I think I want to discover if they're in college or not. Um, so, or drop out. They dropped out of college. And again, for this, I'm not sure if I should specify right if they're in college or if they're out of college or if they dropped out so i'm i'm looking for any of them in this age i'm not sure if i should be more specific in this age i am going to pr preference more towards people who are not in college because again i think they have less resources available to them at least you're in if you're in college you can expose yourself to classes right there's classes about everything nowadays so if you're in a good college you can go to classes for you know african studies caribbean studies whatever um you can have there's, there's probably therapists available to you and all this that that and the other but of course a lot of people in college don't take advantage of that they don't see the need to they don't understand why it's important so i don't i don't want to not include them in this round um even though it might make sense to go for college people who are not in college another reason why i'm going for people in college is because that's just a bigger audience and it's harder to find people who are not in college like how do i even find them right um I know where to start looking for, for people who are in college. I, I can either start with the Discord group I'm, I'm in or go to, you know, college campuses and things like that. But where do I go? You know, how do I find people who are not in college, right? I would just have to put up random Reddit boards or, you know, all these other stuff. It, it, it's going to be way more difficult than if I start with people who could be either or, right? And um, kind of refine it from there. Um, unlike with... And the reason why I separate this from ancestral, because it might be difficult to find people, right, who are second generation or third generation immigrants. Um, but again, I, at least I know where to start with this. I can go to colleges and see, you know, are they second generation, third generation. I can go to, you know, um, my school. I can go to the, the local, <laughs> um, what do you call it, uh, international store or something like that, uh, which is weird, but it's, it's a place I can go to find this information. Um, same thing for socioeconomic status. I can go to neighborhoods that are not doing too well. Um, like the ones I came from, I know where to find these people. Um, but for college opt-outs, even though I am a college opt-out, it's difficult to find out exactly where. Uh, maybe I can go to programs like Year Up, but again, that's even that is is inherently biased because 
programs like those types of nonprofits, that means they already have resources available to them. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I should specify that more or not, but that's where I am so far. Um, some other pre-screen survey questions um, I want to ask is, have they ever kind of like, um, I guess, current day uh, behaviors? I'm not sure how to, but basically I want, I want to, oh, that's my 15 minutes. I should stop. But I want to see what are the current behaviors? Like, do they currently look for self-development? Um, do they currently Google, you know, self-development books or uh, motivational book, um, talks on, on YouTube? Do they, you know, watch TED Talks? Do they look up African and Caribbean history, right? I want to first find people who are open to these things and then move to people who are not. Because obviously you can't really help people who aren't even interested in being helped. So I want to start with the people who are trying to improve themselves but don't really know how to do it or have have had negative experiences doing it um so you know we can start with people who actually want to be helped so yeah um i'll end it here i have like two more videos to do so um keeping it short thanks again for listening and watching have a great day see ya bye bye